Now, we're turning this morning to the Word of God, and we're turning to Luke's gospel this morning, chapter 5, the gospel of Luke, please. And we're in chapter 5. We're coming this morning, I suppose, we could say to a a well-known portion of God's Word. But it's from this portion this morning the Lord has led a message, His message, upon my heart for this service. Now, let's take the time together, please, and let's read from verse 1. We're going to read from verse 1 right down to verse number 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon Him to hear the Word of God, He he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he, he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I want you to notice that the Lord Jesus, in verse 5, he, sorry, verse 4, He says to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. You know, the Lord Jesus wanted Peter to let all the nets down, let every one down. But you know, Peter didn't fully obey the Lord, because if you look in Verse number 5, it says there, Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. You know, if the Lord is asking you to let down your nets, it should be your nets that you let down, not just the one net. Verse 6, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. If only they had to let down all the nets, the one net wouldn't have broke. They would have taken on board all that the Lord had for them. Verse number 7, And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship, and they say, and they, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. I'm telling you, the Lord knows how to bless, doesn't He? Verse 8, And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, and saying, Depart from me, for, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not from henceforth, thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing as he always does to the reading of His own precious truth. It was a terrible night, dear child of God, a terrible night. It was an awful night, an awful night of nothing. As far as these fishermen were concerned in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, 
It was a night when nothing happened. It was a night I'm sure that these fishermen never had experienced before. They toiled all the night, and they had taken, taken nothing. It was a night when nothing happened. And it was such a night. It wasn't just a night this morning, a, a night of nothing, but this very night was an awful fact, an awful fact of failure. In fact, what we have in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, in the early verses, is a fact of failure, failure to the highest degree. You couldn't imagine for the, them fishermen. You couldn't imagine the thoughts that they must have every time they drew up the nets. There was absolutely nothing there. And all through the night, you know, they fished and cast their nets and drew the nets up again. And it was a night when Nothing happened. And you know, as the daylight began to dawn in the eastern sky and the sun began to rise, mind you, the day for them didn't look good. A night of, a night of nothing soon led into a, a day of desperation. And I'm sure the question was asked, what went wrong last night? Where did we go wrong? What did we do wrong? As nothing came. You know, child of God, this morning it wasn't that these fishermen didn't know how to fish. I'm telling you, these men were experts on the sea. These men, if there was men who knew what to do and, and how to do it, it was these men. These men were experts. These men knew how to fish. These men knew how to fish. And these men, it wasn't that they didn't try. These men tried. These men worked hard. These men give everything. These men give their all. And the result, there was no result to show. It certainly was child of God this morning in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, in the early verses. It certainly was a night of nothing. It certainly this morning was a fact of failure. It was certainly a day of desperation that left these fishermen bewildered. But even though this morning it was a night of nothing, and even though this morning it was a real fact of failure to the highest degree, you know what we find in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, is this, all was not lost, you know, and all is never lost when the Savior enters your ship. You know, child of God, when the Savior enters your ship, you'll find it's there and it's then when you are at your lowest point. And what you'll find, child of God, oftentimes 
It's when you at your at your lowest point, not when you're at your highest point. No, it's when you are at your lowest point. When all seems lost, when all seems hopeless, it's when you are at your lowest point. That's when oftentimes you find yourself standing on the brink of a miracle. Notice, child of God this morning, here was these fishermen who toiled all the night and had taken nothing. Mind you, it would have been easy to walk away from it. So many of God's people walk away from the work that God has given to them. I wonder this morning, are you like that? Do you want to walk away from something that you've been doing for years? Something that you've been involved in and you want to walk away? You're fed up with it. You're frustrated with it. You're tired of it. You know, child of God, this morning, that's not a spiritual attitude. That's a selfish attitude. Never you seek to walk away from anything the Lord wants you to do, because let's remember what the Lord has done for you, and let's remember what the Lord has done for us this morning, because if the Lord had a walked away from Calvary, if the Lord had a walked away from the cross, where would any of us be this morning? We'd be lost, and on the road to hell, the whole lot of us. But thank God that night in Gethsemane's garden, when the shadow of the cross was upon him, he didn't say, he didn't say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm walking away from this. He says, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And child of God, this morning, you take a wee moment just to think what the Lord has done for you and how he has blessed you and how He keeps you, and one day will take you to be with Him in heaven. Oh, we should never be urgent to walk away from the work that the Lord has given us to do. And these fishermen in Luke's gospel, chapter 5, it, it was the worst night of their business. But here's my text this morning. And here's the wee text the Lord has put upon my heart for this message. It's verse number 3 of Luke's gospel, chapter 5. And here's the text this morning. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. That's my text. That's the verse. And I want you to notice three things this morning. God wants you to notice them, and, and God wants you to take this home with you this morning. You know the first thing in that verse, the first, what we see first in that verse is the Savior. And He entered. We want to focus this morning on the Savior this morning. Because I'll tell you why, child of God, nothing is ever a loss when the Savior enters. No matter how much we have failed, no matter how life has turned itself on its head, listen, child of God, it's never a loss when the Savior enters. All may seem hopeless at the time, not so when Jesus comes. Maybe there's someone here this morning, I don't know, but the Lord has given me this message, and maybe life for somebody in this meeting this morning, I don't know, nor it's none of my business, unless you make it my business. It's the Lord's business. And life's working against you at the moment. And life's not good for you at the moment. 
Maybe the workplace isn't good. Maybe your business isn't good. Maybe this part of whatever part of your life is not good this morning, child of God. And you've come to this service this morning bewildered with life. God's people can get bewildered, you know. God's people can be troubled, you know. Life can work against the people of God. And maybe there's somebody here this morning, and you're saying to me, George, this morning, I'm like the fisherman. I'm staring into empty nets. I see no hope. I want you to see, first of all, the Savior. And when He entered, when He entered, you know, child of God, this morning, when He enters, the ship. When he enters this morning into that situation of yours, when he enters into that circumstance of yours, listen, I can tell you there's nothing hopeless. He turns the hopeless into the hopeful. He turns that failure into something that's fruitful. My goodness, sure he destroyed death. When the Savior arrives on the scene, no matter how hopeless, child of God, no matter how painful this morning it is, when the Savior enters, there's hope where no hope can be seen. I wonder this morning, child of God, are you here and you've come to this service and you've come to this service distraught? And you've come to this meeting this morning discouraged? And you've come to this meeting this morning and listen, child of God, when you take a look at these fishermen, there was no explanation whatsoever why they didn't take anything. There was no explanation this morning as to why nothing was caught. And you're in this meeting this morning, and you're discouraged, and you're distraught, and life is going against you. You don't know what the way to turn, and there's no explanation for it. I want you to notice something now, child of God. That's when the Savior entered. That's when the Savior entered when it was nothing, only a complete failure. I wonder this morning, is there somebody, brother, listen to me. Sister, will you listen to me now? Listen to the Lord, never you mind me. You listen to the Lord. Are you sitting this morning where Peter sat? Your nets are empty. There's no explanation as to why the outlook is bleak. The future is uncertain. Your nets are empty. You've tried everything. Nothing's working out. Maybe there's someone here this morning. And I know a number of you are in business. What about through this morning? Maybe business isn't the way it used to be. Things are slowing up. Things are not booming the way they used to. Contracts aren't coming in the way they used to. I can tell you life and business and life can soon slow up on you. I'm telling you, child of God, it doesn't matter how successful you are in life. 
These fishermen were successful. They knew their job. But I'm telling you this night, things was brought to a standstill. I can tell you things can soon be brought to a standstill out of your control. No explanation. And these fishermen have toiled all night and have taken nothing. But look at verse 3, and he entered. Thank God tonight failure is not final when the Savior enters. Do you know what the Lord Jesus wants to say to somebody's heart in here this morning? Listen, I don't know what area, what circumstance any of you are in, but here's what the Lord Jesus wants you to know. With me, nothing is at a loss. With me, there is a future. With me, there is always a way forward. The lovely thing about the Lord Jesus in this occasion was this. The Lord Jesus wasn't invited to come on board. Nobody forced the Lord Jesus to come on board. You, you noticed this this morning. Notice it. Nobody invited Him. He came freely. He came voluntarily. There's not only the Savior in that verse, notice the ship in that verse, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon. The wise decision Simon made was not to hinder the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. If that was you or me this morning, you'd have been saying, hey, who are you? Well, who do you think you are stepping into this ship? And sometimes, child of God, this morning, when the Savior wants to come on board, we don't allow Him to come on board because sometimes we're too proud. We think that we can handle this ourselves. But I want you to notice the ship this morning. Often, it's the failures of life. Often, it's the dark times that the Lord Jesus often uses as His pulpit. This ship this morning was an utter failure. Peter and the men exits the ship discouraged, ah, but the Savior enters into encourage. Listen, Peter and the men, they exit in total misery. The Lord Jesus enters for ministry. You'll find for your own personal self, child of God, as I have found time and time and time and time again, the best time the Lord Jesus ministers to me is when things are at a low end. The lovely thought about this story is this morning, this scene this morning, the Lord Jesus did not ignore their problem. The Lord Jesus did not ignore their circumstance. The Lord Jesus did not ignore, did not ignore their plight. Listen, child of God, the Lord Jesus doesn't ignore you and you. Look at verse 3, because here where the Lord Jesus enters into the heart of the problem. He enters into the heart of the problem. I want you to notice the ship because, first of all, it was a place of intimacy. It was the place of intimacy because it was here where close communion with Christ was brought together. Oftentimes, child of God, and I'm speaking again from personal experience, when life turns upside down and everything seems to be against you, and listen, child of God, when nothing seems 
to be working out. I always find that's when the Lord draws near most. The Lord Jesus enters the ship when failure was paramount. You remember, it was when failure was paramount that He came to Elijah under the juniper tree. Remember when things were hopeless that He entered into the scene with Mary and Martha. It was when everything was hopeless that He entered into Jairus' house. Listen, child of God, do you feel at a total loss this morning? You're at your wit's end. And listen, child of God, it may be for you not today, but this could be for you tomorrow. This could be for you next week, because mind you, the day before this, the day before this, heaven was going along as it always did. But this night was going to be a different night. Boys, this, this was going to be an awful night. This was going to be a terrible night. Everything was normal the day before, but nothing's normal this day. Listen, child of God, in your life, in your business, whatever you're involved in, listen, listen, child of God, in your workplace, and I'll tell you, it's the same with us pastors in our ministry. Everything could be going well today, this week, this week, but next week, it could be different for us. It could be different. And when life goes wrong, child of God, sometimes what we fail to see, what we fail to see is this, that the Lord's hand is in it. Listen, I'll tell you something now, child of God. The Lord's hand was in this. It was the Lord. It was the Lord this morning that brought this business to a standstill. I'll tell you now the miracle in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, was not the draft of fishes. The miracle in this case was that they toiled all the night and had taken nothing. It was a miracle that they toiled all the night and had taken nothing. I can tell you these fishermen, all they could see, what was the result at the surface of the water, what they failed to see, that the Lord was at work underneath the surface. I want you to see what happens here. These men, they cast out at night. They let down their nets for a draft. And the Lord, what does the Lord do? The Lord speaks to the fish and He says, Away to the other side. Don't you think for a moment now that these men caught none because there was no fish there that night? I can tell you now, you ask the boys who were over there, they'll tell you the miracle was, it wasn't that they didn't catch, that it was, the miracle was that they couldn't catch And He says the place is full of fish, no matter where you look. And if you check on the Sea of Galilee, the water is clear. You can see fish below you all over the place. And the Lord Jesus he knew what was going on. These boys in the surface didn't know, but, but the Lord knew what was going on underneath. And the Lord Jesus just spoke to the fish, and He says, Away over to the far side, and wherever these boats are, you just make your way ahead of them. I can tell you there was no other creature listened to the Lord Jesus more so than the fish. Remember in Matthew chapter 17, he said to Peter, Peter, away you down to the lake there and cast in a hook, and there'll come up a fish to the hook, and don't you be putting a fly on it or a worm on it, and when you take the fish, open its mouth, you don't need a pin code, open its mouth, and you'll find there a piece of money. And I can tell you something now, child of God, God could soon bring your business to a standstill. God could soon bring blessing to a standstill. Because that's the only time when we we'll listen when things go wrong. The ship this morning. It was the place of intimacy. It was when the Lord Jesus came on board, not when their nets were full, but when their nets were empty. And He entered into one of the ships. 
But then I want you to notice something else. It was a place of instruction because it says there in verse 3, and he, and he said to Simon, thrust out little from the land there, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. I want you to notice where it was. He thrust out a little from the land, thrust out a wee bit. Now, don't go out into the deep waters, thrust into the shallow waters. The Lord Jesus has lessons for us to learn in the shallow water. And you know, sometimes this morning the Lord may ha sometimes has to empty our nets and keep them nets emptied until we're prepared to stop and until we're prepared to listen to Him. The Lord sometimes can bring things to a standstill, child of God, to get on board. There's the Savior. There's the ship. I want to finish this morning on the success. The Lord Jesus taught them the lessons. And I think one of the lessons was John 15 and 5. No matter how good you are, how gifted you are, the Lord Jesus had this lesson for them. Without me, you can do nothing. And another lesson I believe the Lord Jesus could have taught them was 2 Corinthians 3 and 5. Our sufficiency is of God. These fishermen were gifted. These fishermen were talented. And I'll tell you something else. It doesn't matter how good a preacher is either. And it doesn't matter how good a pastor is either. Sometimes pastors and preachers can get too big for themselves. And the Lord just puts us a halt on things. The Lord sometimes has to take us boys to the one side and says, listen, no matter how gifted you are or how many missions you take or how many meetings you preach at, listen, without me you can do nothing. And child of God this morning, our sufficiency is of God. And without me, the Savior says, ye can do nothing but look at the success. Verse number 6 there. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. I'll tell you something this morning. The Lord blessed them with far more than what they could handle. Listen, child of God, this is what the Lord wants to do for you. This is what the Lord wants to do for me. This is what the Lord wants to do for the rest of us. For all of us. Oh, friends, this morning, here's what we want to see. Here's what we want to see. The blessing here wasn't in the net when it was full. The blessing was in the ship, not in the net. The nets only held the fruit of the blessing. Let's never forget this this morning. Christ is the fount of blessing. The fish in the net was only the sense of the blessing. You'll never forget this. Christ was the source of the blessing. But here's the great success this morning. Look at verse 11. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed Him. You know, sometimes life, life goes bang so the Lord can bring us blessing. These fishermen, they couldn't explain what went wrong. Maybe you can't explain this morning what's going wrong in your life. Maybe this morning the Lord wants you to stand back and allow Him this morning to take over your situation, to take over your circumstance, and the Lord wants you to listen to Him no more listening to yourself. The Lord has great things for us, child of God. The Lord has great things for you. The Lord has great things for me. But sometimes the Lord has to put the lid on things. 
to get us to listen and to teach us lessons when at other times we're not prepared to listen or to learn. Whatever it is, child of God, you remember this. All is not lost when the Savior enters the ship. Thank God there's lessons to be learned when life goes wrong. And there's lessons to be learned from the pulpit of failure that you'll never learn them from the pulpit of success. Be like Peter this morning. Step back. Whatever that circumstance is, will you step out of it? And let the Savior come in and let the Savior take over. Let the Savior have charge and let him teach you. The Lord longs to bless you, know, even though we have failed. The Lord longs to bless. May our closing prayer, may our prayer be the words of our closing hymn. Teach me 